Once when I was young, I sat in the living room playing with my miniature cars, creating the largest car collision and pileup ever seen on the highway. I was only a child then, and it gained such enjoyment when I was able to play with my toys. Look out! I can still remember what made that particular day more significant than others. My father walked in the door, earlier than usual I thought, and slowly put his briefcase to the floor. I broke away concentration from my interstate pileup just long enough to say hello. Hey, Dad. My dad barely responded. He walked slowly to his chair and sat down. He stared into space and let out an exhausted sigh. I didn't say anything to him as he sat without emotion. Had I known the full anguish he was feeling inside, I would have either left the room or given him a hug. Earlier that day, he had lost his job at the company. Whether he was laid off, fired, or had quit, I didn't know. I never talked with him about it after that. My mother always said he just lost his job. We're out of control! I guess it was too close to Christmas and that's why he was so depressed. Or maybe he liked his job. Either way, things were going to be different around the house until my father could get another one. I can still remember as he walked to my parents' room, I heard him mutter to himself, What a nice Christmas present. What a nice Christmas present. Have a good day at school, son. Dad pretty much sat around the house the following day. He watched a lot of television and ate potato chips. Sometimes I couldn't even watch any of my shows because the television was always his. It was a rough time for us as a family. My parents would argue a lot during this time. I think my mother expected my father to be more motivated to get another job. This time he didn't care, he wasn't motivated. Every time I came home from school there he was, lounging around the house. What could I say to him to make anything better? Soon I came to the realization that my father was a zombie. He had come home late one night when I first noticed something different about him. He had become a zombie, or as they are called, the walking dead. It wasn't his life or losing his job that had warmed down. The poor guy had just become a zombie. At first my mother and I tried to ignore it and act as though everything were normal, but one evening at the dinner table, things got out of hand.
During meatloaf night, he bit my mother. Now this must have meant a zombie had bitten him because once my mother was bitten, she became a zombie as well. They never attacked me. I guess because I was their kid. But other people in the neighborhood were spared no such favor. My father bit the green grocer. My mother bit the mailman when he was delivering the mail. They bit our neighbors, the Hendersons, during their Sunday cookout. My dad attacked his fishing buddy and ate some guy at the boat shop. Then followed a drifter, mechanic, and a salesman. At school, I wrote about what was happening and was sent to the principal to be reprimanded. Mr. Wright read what I had wrote to himself and then scolded me for writing such nonsense. Mr. Wells, what kind of uh, English paper is this? You know, there is a difference between imagination and of course, he was only creating a front to cover his own tracks. You see, my principal was a werewolf. Every full moon, he became a vicious creature of the night. I think he suspected that I knew. The look of an animal was in his eyes. He sent me on my way with two days of after school detention. I expect you back in class, Mr. Wells. I hope you learned something. Now all this time my parents were building what they called a legion of zombies to assist them in their goal of world destruction. They had gathered all the zombies they had bitten and rallied them to the call of world domination. Of course, this didn't settle well with the hippie movement that was protesting down the street. They want us to go to war? Are we gonna go? No! This is America! This is my war! One, two, three, four! We don't want your fucking war! One, two, three, four! We don't want your fucking war! One, two, three, four! We don't want your fucking war! Once the hippies got word of the violent plans of my parents and their people, they wouldn't stand for it. Hey, hey, everybody listen up, listen up. There's zombies down the road. You guys want to go talk to them? Yeah! Let's go! Yeah! 
The hippies approach the zombies to begin verbal confrontation. The dialogue between the two parties wasn't going too well and the threat of physical violence was in the air. After yelling at each other for a while, a joke was said. It was said either by the hippies or the zombies. It didn't matter because the joke instantly calmed the mood. The fighting ended and the two groups connected and mingled. I assume that the zombies and the hippies got along so well because they were both brain dead. My principal, Mr. Wright, however, did not share the same fate. When he became a werewolf, he was hunted deep in the woods by a group of hunters. Suddenly, and most strange of all, one of the hunters felt bad for the werewolf. He looked so helpless, just tied to a tree. Their hearts were touched and they agreed to keep the werewolf as a pet. Or so the story goes. <coughs> Let him go. As for my parents and their zombies, well, I'm still here today, so I guess you can say our lives worked out. And even though my parents were zombies, we were able to live together as a family unit. I look back at my childhood, and I'm glad everything turned out. All right.